Which brings us to the question of India. The ISIS is at India's doorstep, perhaps has a toehold in India already. How does Delhi plan to counter this? Let me give you a brief background. It is often said that peace in a country rests on two pillars, internal and external security. We have uh, covered the rise of the ISIS in Afghanistan, and it's not only Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Bangladesh, China, Pakistan. India is surrounded by countries where the ISIS is on the rise. That's why the Prime Minister of India and the government of India have accorded the highest priority to tackling global terror. <laughs> न तो अपने बैंक होते हैं न टंकसाल और न ही हथियारों की फैक्ट्री फिर भी उन्हें धन और हथियारों की कभी कमी नहीं होती कहां से पाते हैं ये सब कौन देता है उन्हें ये सुविधाएं आतंकवाद की स्टेट स्पॉन्सरशिप सबसे बड़ा खतरा बना हुआ है State sponsorship of terrorism is what he was talking about. He was speaking in the parliament of the Maldives a couple of days ago. India has missed no opportunity to bring up the issue of terrorism and terror financing at global forums. And that emphasis is well placed because what happens around India impacts India. And here too, the ISIS claims to be gaining ground. Only today, the group has claimed to have carried out a deadly attack on the Indian army. This is according to a statement from the Islamic State's media wing. They claim to have hit an Indian army post. The military has not confirmed this version. Just a month ago, the ISIS claimed to have established a new branch in India. They called it the Vilaya of Hind, the province of Hind. The army rejected that too. But the threat of ISIS cannot be overruled. Look around India. In Singapore, the Philippines, the ISIS has spread its wings. Especially in the Philippines, there's a threat of resurgence of the ISIS. Where it's not physically present, the ISIS uses technology as a tool to work with local groups. Put simply, India is surrounded by countries where the ISIS presence is growing, and top of that list remains Pakistan. Reports say that the ISIS has been recruiting in Pakistan for many years now. The country is either complicit or clueless, more likely the former. The country is a safe haven for terrorists and militant outfits. Listed terrorists move freely in Pakistan. They set up new front organizations. They indulge in cross-border terror with the support of the Pakistani army. And India has often been at the receiving end of Pakistan's experiments with terror. And even as India deals with these external worries, external pressures, it needs to be wary of the presence of ISIS at home. Since 2014, there have been about 180 cases involving sympathizers of ISIS in India. The number of Indians who managed to travel to either West Asia or Afghanistan, according to records, between 2014 and 2016, was only between 10 to 15. But that number has grown since. Some reports say that more than 100 Indian citizens have traveled to the self-declared caliphate. It is very hard to come by verified reports on this. In recent months, the NIA has cracked down on a pro-ISIS group from Amroha in the northern state of Uttar Pradesh. This group had plans to carry out attacks in the national capital of Delhi. Police in Hyderabad, meanwhile, are also investigating a suspected ISIS module. Reports of ISIS activity have also emerged from the Kashmir Valley, as we discussed earlier. The threat of ISIS is real. They co-opt local groups. Local groups claim allegiance to ISIS.